I want to show you how to add these water droplets to any object you want using geometry nodes. With this method, we'll be able to control the size, randomness, and position of our droplets. And if you stick around, I'll show you how to make some moving droplets too. Let's hit Shift A and add a UV sphere. We'll use this for our starting object. Then go into edit mode, select everything, and move it up so the sphere is on top of the grid. Then I'll go back into object mode, right click the sphere, and click shade smooth. We can also give it a basic material. Let's hide it for now. Hit shift A and add a cube, and let's make the shape of our water droplet. We want to keep them low poly, so I'll hit control 1 to give it one level of subdivision. Then apply it. Then we can go into sculpt mode, select the grab brush by pressing G, and start shaping our first droplet. Then I'll make two more that are slightly different by duplicating it and reshaping it. I'll rename them and put them in a collection called droplets. Don't worry about them being low poly, we'll subdivide them again later. Let's also make a quick material for our droplets. You can delete the principled BSDF and use a glass BSDF instead. By default, the IOR is set to 1.5, which is the value of glass. IOR stands for index of refraction, and if you look up the values, you can find that water has the value of 1.333. Okay, now we can hide this collection and add a plane. Go into edit mode, select everything, and delete it. Let's open up the geometry node editor, add a geometry node modifier. We can remove the group input for now and drag in the object we want to use and the collection of droplets we made. Then let's add a join geometry with just the object plugged in. Then hit shift A and search for a node called distribute points on faces. Then plug in the object into the mesh socket and search for an instance on points node. We should plug in our droplets into the instance socket. Plug the instance on points into the join geometry. Check pick instance and separate children. Then we can scale these instances down. To see more of them, we can increase the density but you may notice them intersecting with each other. We can fix this by changing the distribution method from random to Poisson disk and slightly increasing the distance minimum. And to make more of them, we'll increase the density maximum. You can also change the seed to get different random patterns. Next, we want to align the rotation of our droplets to the surface of the object. To do this, simply connect the rotation from the distribute points to the rotation of the instance on points. Now the rotation should be aligned with the surface of the object. I'm also going to add a set shade smooth and a subdivision surface. To make it look more natural, we'll want to introduce some randomness. Hit shift A and search for a rotate rotation node and drop it in between the distribute points on faces and the instance on points node. Change the orientation to local. We want to use the Z axis. So let's add a combine XYZ and plug it into the rotate by. Then we can add a random value node and plug it into the Z. Then you can type negative pi for the minimum and positive pi for the max. That should give us a full range of rotation. Now let's work on the scale. Let's add another random value node and plug it into the scale. I'm going to keep these values pretty small and increase the density. Then I'm going to select all these nodes and press Ctrl J to frame them. Press the F2 key to add a label and we'll call this small droplets. Then select these nodes again and press Shift D to duplicate them and move them under. With this frame selected, we can press F2 to rename it. I'll name it Big Droplets. Then we can join it with our object. I'm going to disconnect the small droplets for now so we can focus on the big ones. A quick way to disconnect nodes is to hold Ctrl and right click and drag. Now we can increase the min and max of our random value to make them bigger. And we'll decrease the density to have fewer droplets. Let's rejoin the smaller droplets to see how it looks. You may notice them overlapping. To prevent this, we'll want to delete the smaller ones that are too close to the big ones. Hit Shift A and search for a geometry proximity node. We'll use this to check the distance between our big and small droplets. But before we can plug our big droplets in, we'll need a Realize Instances node to convert the instances into geometry. Then we can add a compare node and change it to less than, and plug the distance into the top socket. And finally, we'll add a delete geometry node and change it from point to instance. Then we can plug our small droplets into it and the result of our compare node into the selection. With the compare node, we can control how close the droplets can be before they start deleting. We just want to prevent them from intersecting, so we'll make it a really small value. Now we have a nice variety of droplets mixed together. I'm going to replace this sphere with an apple to see what it looks like. 
What if we want to control the placement of these droplets? For that, we can use a similar node setup to the one we used for deleting the small droplets that were intersecting with the big ones. But instead of checking the distance between the small and big droplets, we can check the distance between the droplets and the ground. So let's go into the viewport, hit Shift A and add a plane underneath our object. If you need to, go into edit mode and scale it so it covers the bottom of the object. And I'll rename it ground and we can hide it if we don't want to see it. Then select our droplets again and go back to the geometry node editor and drag in the ground plane we just made. For this, let's just focus on the big droplets. So again, I'll disconnect the small ones for now. Then we can select the geometry proximity, compare, and delete geometry nodes, and hit Shift D to duplicate them and move them out of the way. And you can press Alt P to remove it from the frame. Then we can plug our ground plane into the geometry proximity node. Then plug our big droplets into the delete geometry node. Then disconnect this and plug the delete geometry into the join geometry. And just like before, we can control how many to delete with the compare node. If you check relative, you'll be able to move, rotate, and scale this plane to affect the placement of the droplets. And you don't have to use a plane, you can plug any object into here. If we want there to be more of a gradual fall off, like having the droplets get smaller as they get closer to the ground, we can do that with some of the same nodes here. Let's head back to our big droplets and change our random scale value so the min is really small and the max is big. Then we can duplicate our ground plane and move it here. Press Alt P to remove it from the frame and plug it into a geometry proximity node. Then we can plug the distance into a map range node and plug the result into the max of the random value node. Then we can use this two max value to control how big they get. I'll increase the density to see what it's doing. So that's how you can control where you want your droplets. I think for this apple, it looks okay when we have random droplets all over it. So I'm going to leave it like that. Next, I want to show you how to make some moving droplets. For this, let's add a Bezier curve. Go into edit mode, select everything and delete it. While in edit mode, select the draw tool on the left and select surface. Then let's draw a line going down our object. This will be the path the moving droplet follows. Once we're done with that, we can go back to our geometry nodes. Make some room and drag in our Bezier curve. Plug our curve into a curve to mesh node. Make sure fill caps is checked. Then add a curve circle and plug it into the profile curve. Then control shift click our curve to mesh node to preview it and reduce the radius of our curve circle. Let's add a set curve radius in between our curve and curve to mesh node. Then add a float curve plugged into the radius. Then add a spline parameter with the factor plugged into the value of the float curve. Make sure it's plugged into the value, not the factor. Later, we'll use this float curve to make the shape of the droplet. Now let's add a trim curve in between our curve and set radius. We'll use this to animate the movement of the droplet. Next, let's make the round bottom part of our droplet. There are a few different ways of doing this, like adding a sphere and merging it somehow, but I found this way to be the best and give the most control. After the curve to mesh, let's add a merge by distance to merge the vertices at the tip. Then add an extrude mesh. Uncheck individual and lower the offset to something small. We only want to extrude the face here on the end, so we have to find a way of selecting it. It's actually pretty easy to isolate because it's the only face with more than four vertices. So to check for that, we can add a face neighbors node and plug the vertex count into a compare node and set it to greater than four and plug that into the selection. Then we'll slightly increase the offset to extrude it just a little bit. Then add a scale elements node and plug it in. Plug top into the selection and increase the scale by a small amount. Then we can duplicate these two nodes three more times and chain them like this. Plug the scale elements into the extrude meshes and the tops into the selections. Control shift click the last one to preview it and lower the scales of each of the scale elements so it becomes round and you can adjust the extrude meshes until you get the shape you want. Let's go back to our trim curve and plug a value node into the start and end and add a math node set to multiply in between the value and the start and set the value in the multiply to something small like 0.4. When we move this value, we can see the droplet go down and get longer, which is exactly what we want. Let's add a resample curve node before our trim curve and set it to something like 200. Then we can use this float curve to give a more organic shape to the tail of the droplet. Let's keyframe the droplet. I'm going to open up the graph editor and make it so it starts slow and speeds up. Now let's join it with our apple and non-moving droplets. 
And I think these droplets are looking too big, so I'm going to adjust them. Let's also give it a set material with the water material we made earlier. I'm going to select all of these nodes here and press Ctrl G to group them, and name it something like Droplet Head. Ideally, this droplet would pick up these other ones when they touch. A simple way to fake this is to use a geometry proximity and make it delete these droplets when they get close, or have them shrink down to nothing. I'll show you both ways, starting with the delete. We want these droplets above our moving droplet to stay deleted after it passes through them. So it's best if we make a different object to plug into the proximity node. So let's duplicate these nodes and connect our keyframed value into the end of the trim curve, but keep the start at zero. Control shift click to preview it. Then we can reset this float curve and make it flat and small. When the droplets are within a certain distance of this object, they'll be deleted. So I'm going to frame these nodes and name it deleter and connect it to a geometry proximity, a compare less than and a delete geometry set to instance. Make sure our non-moving droplets are joined together and plug them into the delete. Then we'll add a join geometry after and plug in our moving droplet. We can adjust this value in the compare node to something really small. We want the droplets to disappear right before intersecting. The other option is to have them scale down to zero, kind of like they're being sucked into the moving one. For this, instead of using a compare node, we'll use a map range node and plug it into a scale instances. Then we can adjust the from max value. Now our droplets will get smaller and eventually disappear when they get close enough to the moving droplet. We can also have this droplet make a wet trail across the material of our object. To do that, let's add another geometry proximity node with the deleter object plugged into it. Then add a compare less than node and a store named attribute. Let's name this wet. Plug the compare node into the value and the apple or whatever object you're using into the geometry. Then let's select the material of our object in the shader editor and add an attribute and type in wet. Then we can control shift click it to preview it. Then slightly increase the value in the compare node. Let's add a blur attribute in between our compare and store named attribute. You can increase the iterations if you need to. You may also need more subdivisions on your object like I do. Then back to the material, we can add a color ramp to change these values and plug it into the roughness. To mimic a wet look, will make the trail part look shiny. And there you have it. So please leave a like if you found this video useful. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments.